Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey. I could do some of the things I've always wanted to. Like what? Oh, you can't imagine. I'd, I'd like to do just whatever I like the whole day long. <laughs> things like having a haircut, eating gelato. Yes, and I'd, I'd like to sit a sidewalk cafe and look in shop windows, walk in the rain, have fun and maybe some excitement. Doesn't seem much to you, does it? It's great. Tell you what, why don't we do all those things? Who are you? Who am I? Am I supposed to know? Come to think of it, no, you're not supposed to know. Are you stranded? My father was supposed to pick me up, but something must have happened. Whoever your father is and whatever happened, I'll be eternally grateful. That is, if I can give you a lift. You certainly can. You can drive me home. Good. I'll get your bags. Welcome to Miss Cafe's iconic trail. If you are not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss any upload. Today we are doing a deep dive into the life of one of the greatest icons of the 21st century, Audrey Hepburn. Audrey Hepburn was a dedicated philanthropist, the first humanitarian actress who starred in several classic films such as Breakfast at Tiffin's, A Nun Story, and Roman Holiday. She was charismatic and the camera loved her. Her legacy is powerfully tied to her role as Holly Golightly in Breakfast at Tiffany's. The film garnered Hepburn an Academy Award nomination. I like the fact that she never did look like the other women in Hollywood at that time. During Hepburn's time, the popular actresses were curvy, Marilyn Monroe, Elizabeth Taylor, Sophia Loren. Interestingly, she was criticized for her svelte figure and look, yet later became noted for her beauty and she made slim fashionable. With her style and grace, became a fashion icon. Her charm captivated millions and made her one of the greatest movie actors and fashion icons of all time. One thing is for sure beauty has never been about perfection. Perfection is boring and Hepburn epitomized this. Fun facts. Audrey's stage name, Hepburn, was taken from her father's name. He was born Joseph Victor Anthony Rustin, but later double-barreled the surname to the more aristocratic sounding Hepburn Rustin. She spoke five languages. From her parents, she learned Dutch and English and later French, Spanish and Italian. Now let's get into her childhood. Audrey Hepburn was born Etta Van Heemster Hepburn Rustin on May 4, 1929 in Ixelles, Brussels, Belgium. Her father was an English banker named Joseph Victor Anthony Hepburn Rustin, and her mother was a Dutch baroness named Ella van Baroness Ella van Heimstra, was from a long line of Dutch nobility dating back to the 12th century. Hepburn had two half brothers from her father's previous marriage. She had a near pleasant early childhood in Belgium. She was attending boarding school in London when World War II erupted in Europe. When the Germans invaded Poland at the start of World War II, Hepburn's mother took her to live with relatives in Holland, thinking they would be safer there. The Germans soon invaded Holland, where the young Audrey and her mother were staying, and the family suffered many hardships. Her father, Joseph, was a Nazi sympathizer, so entrenched in the movement that he abruptly left the family in 1935. He moved to London and became more deeply involved with British fascists. His departure, teamed with the germ invasion, plunged the family into poverty. Her relationship with her father was such a complex one that she stated, it was the most traumatic event of my life, a tragedy from which I don't think I've ever recovered I worshipped him and missed him terribly from the day he disappeared. I always envied other people's fathers came home with tears because they had a daddy." End quote. Hepburn tried to find her father 25 years after she had lost contact with him. She eventually located him through the Red Cross and visited him in Ireland. 
the experience was cold and left her bitter and hurt. Her mother, the aristocratic Van Heemstra, scrubbed floors in a hotel to put her daughter through ballet school. Sometimes Audrey had nothing to eat except flour, so she turned to her passion, dance. During the occupation, Audrey gave performances to raise money for the Dutch resistance and, after the war, was offered a ballet scholarship in London. Hepburn continued to pursue her ballet studies, however, was told by a ballet instructor that at 5 feet 7 inches she was too tall for the male dancers. Also, her poor health due to the war ultimately were the reasons that she couldn't pursue her dream of becoming prima ballerina. Her poor health during World War II had impaired some of her muscular development. The once chubby girl became gaunt. Though she had a very healthy appetite, she was unable to gain weight due to starvation during the war. Malnutrition stunted her growth and changed her frame forever. To survive under the Nazi occupation, she pretended a lot of times. Once, when she was bringing a message to a British pilot hiding in the forest outside her town, she saw two German soldiers heading towards her. She dropped to her knees and pretended to be picking wildflowers and smilingly handed the Nazis a handful as they passed. The soldiers were so charmed that they just patted her head and walked away. After the war ended, she returned to London where she modeled and began acting in small parts on stage and screen. In 1951, Hepburn was discovered by the French writer Colette while in Monaco shooting a film. She insisted Hepburn be cast in the title role of the Broadway version of her novel Gigi, and the young actress made her Broadway debut that same year. Her breakthrough role was a portrayal of Princess Anne, a royal who escapes her official duties to experience Rome as an ordinary citizen in Roman holiday. It co-starred Gregory Peck. The movie earned her an Academy Award for Best Actress, making her the first actress to win an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a BAFTA Award for a single performance. Following her success in Roman holiday, Hepburn went on to star in a series of successful films, including Sabrina, My Fair Lady, Funny Face, Wait Until Dark, and Breakfast at Tiffin's. Some thought she was the wrong choice as Holly in the film Breakfast at Tiffin's, and the role was better suited for Marilyn Monroe. Holly is supposed to be a naive call girl, but she proved that she was versatile as an actor. She found the breakfast at Tiffany's role challenging because of her quiet nature. I'm an introvert, she reportedly said. According to her Lifetime biography, playing the extroverted girl was the hardest thing I ever did. End quote. Early in Hepburn's career, producers cast male actors old enough to be her father as love interests and paid her a fraction of their paychecks. Humphrey Bogart was 54 in Sabrina, Hepburn was 24, Fred Astaire was 58 in Funny Face. She was 28, Hepburn is one, the few people in the EGOT club. The EGOT is essentially four of the major annual American Entertainment Awards, an Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, and Tony Award. She is also the first to join this elite club posthumously, earning an Emmy for Gardens of the World with Audrey Hepburn in September 1993 and her Grammy Award in 1994. She was one of the first women along with Elizabeth Taylor to make $1 million in Hollywood. Hepburn starred in over 25 films. Her film career spanned over three decades from the 1950s to the 1980s. Audrey Hepburn's fashion legacy transcends time. She is essentially the de facto embodiment and standard of gamine fashion. A gamine is described as either a slim, elegant young woman with a mischievous personality or tomboy. Given she was able to translate this quality into a timeless look that was both sophisticated and playful, 
the little black dress she wore in breakfast at Tiffany's endures across the decades. Her short, sleek hairstyle, known as the pixie cut, or became a trendsetter in the 1950s and 1960s. With her slim figure and simple attire, her black turtleneck, capri pants, and ballet flats, Audrey's look was more attainable for women than that of other Hollywood stars. It was a style daringly new at a time when women still mostly wore skirts and high heels. Audrey preferred casual clothes when she was out of the spotlight, and even her high fashion outfits were defined by simplicity. She was one of the first women to introduce the casual, girdle-free style. She considered her style to be quite accessible. My appearance is accessible to everyone. With hair tied in a bun, big sunglasses and black dress, end quote. In the fashion world, Audrey Hepburn was mostly associated with French fashion designer Hubert de Givenchy, whom she first hired to design her on-screen wardrobe for her second Hollywood film, Sabrina, in 1954. That time, she was still mostly unknown as an actress and de Givenchy was still a young couturier starting his fashion house. Audrey became his muse and he dressed her on and off screen. Fashion played an unusually central role in many of her movies. Given she designed the iconic little black dress in Breakfast at Tiffany's, though it was Coco Chanel who invented the little black dress, given she's little black dress worn by Audrey made it popular. The dress proved to be iconic that in 2006, it was sold at an auction for almost $600,000, the highest price paid for a dress in film history. Audrey was shy and insecure, and given she's creations made her not only beautiful, it helped her overcome her insecurities. Audrey was also credited for boosting the sales of Burberry trench coats when she wore one in breakfast at Tiffany's. She also became closely associated with the jewelry brand Tiffany and Company. Her and Givenchy were magic together and breakfast at Tiffany's cemented her as a style icon. Fun I think Givenchy is just the best designer today. Oh yeah. And uh, he said make him he's better. certainly he's certainly the best for me. Mm -hmm. Because everything he does corresponds with what I like in, in style and in fashion and I find him very creative and very he has a great deal of integrity as a man and as a designer and uh, I like rather simple clothes oh, yes. which Hubert does do and and he accentuates the quality and the line and uh, has uses beautiful colors. Oh yes, yes. lovely materials yes, and yes, lovely yes, colors. Yes. And his sense of coloring, I think, is divine. Oh, yes. Fun facts: Hepburn helped invent the speedy bag for Louis Vuitton in 1965. She requested for a smaller version of the speedy bag to fit her petite frame. Given her star appeal after the success of 1961's Breakfast at Tiffany's. The house acquiesced and the Speedy 25 was born. Hepburn's iconic look was, according to her son, what she thought of as a good mixture of defects. She thought she had a big nose and big feet, and she was too skinny and not enough breast. She would look in the mirror and say, I don't understand why people see me as beautiful. End quote. She was always quite amazed by the fact that she was seen as such a beauty icon and as a great actress. She was very shy about that part of her global appreciation. What is in other people's minds is not in my mind. I just do my thing." End quote. It's incredibly sad that despite being admired for her beauty and style, she never considered herself attractive. Though she eventually gained a greater sense of appreciation and self-esteem after giving birth to her children, Hepburn's style helped change the image of what was considered acceptable feminine beauty. She kept it simple, classy, 
sophisticated, elegant, timeless. As far as her favorite food, she admits to loving simple meal. I don't like fancy food at all. I much prefer an extremely simple meal that's exquisitely done. A perfectly cooked steak, a beautiful salad, some raspberries. I eat everything. I eat a great many vegetables and fruit. And uh, otherwise I eat meat and fish and all those things. Uh -huh. I, I like chocolate oh, and sweets, but they are not good for my skin, I've oh, noticed. So I oh, can't really? eat very much of them. <laughs> Now let's get into Hepburn's other passion, which was philanthropy. She was a well-known humanitarian who became a goodwill ambassador for UNICEF. She was the first major Hollywood star to do charity work on a larger scale. A very empathetic person, she summed up the importance of giving back by explaining, I can't stand suffering in any form, especially children. Apparently, I'm one of those few lucky people who can help a little bit." End quote. In 1988, she became special ambassador for UNICEF and immediately set off for Ethiopia to assist with famine victims. Grueling trips to the Sudan, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Ecuador, Vanuage, Mexico, Venezuela, Ecuador, Bangladesh, and Vietnam followed. I do my best, she said simply. I wish I could do more. End quote. I think the reason she was very passionate about philanthropy was because she herself had suffered through war and malnutrition. I was born with an enormous need for affection, she once said, and a terrible need to give it. End quote. Her appreciation for the little things in life and her passion to help the less fortunate stemmed from her early life experience, surviving the Nazi occupation during World War II. Audrey worked tirelessly for UNICEF to raise awareness of poverty and famine. It warms my heart to see that she used her celebrity to give back to the less fortunate, especially since she was in their shoes as a child. Let's get into her relationships and marriages, which were at times scandalous. Hepburn was engaged to British businessman James Hansen. While filming her first major motion picture, Roman Holiday, she called off the wedding, despite having several gown fittings. During the filming of Sabrina, Hepburn began a relationship with actor William Holden, who was already married. She had planned to marry Holden and start a family with him. Wow, wow, she broke off with him after it was revealed that he got a vasectomy. In 1953, at the British opening of the film Roman Holiday, Hepburn was introduced to Mel Ferrer, an actor and stage and film director, at a party. At the time, Ferrer was a twice-divorced father of four, who was 12 years older than Hepburn. But despite the age difference, she came to like Ferrer. They got married on September 25, 1954, in an intimate ceremony in Switzerland. In 1954, Hepburn returned to the stage to star with her new love in the Broadway play On Dine. She received a Tony nomination for her role as a sprite in the production. Around the same time, Hepburn was also nominated for her first Academy Award for her work in Roman Holiday. The actress won both awards. On June 17, 1960, in Lucerne, Switzerland, Hepburn gave birth to her first child, Sean Hepburn Farrow. During her marriage to Farrow, there were rumors of infidelity on both sides. Their infidelities damaged their relationship, and Farrow and Hepburn decided to end their 14-year marriage, formally announcing their divorce in November of 1968. Shortly after divorcing Fur, Hepburn married once again. On January 18, 1969, she wed Italian psychiatrist neurologist Andrea Dotti, whom she had met on a cruise. After their wedding, the couple settled in Rome. Four months into her marriage, Hepburn became pregnant again. On February 8, 1970, Hepburn gave birth to her second child 
Luca Dotti. With the birth of her new son, the actress decided to take a break from Hollywood and devote her time to be a mother at La Paisible, her chalet in Tolochinaz, Switzerland. She made it clear that family took precedence over her career. The fact that I've made movies doesn't mean breakfast gets made or that my child does better in his homework, she said in 1980, explaining an eight-year screen hiatus that ended in 1976 with Robin and Marion. I still have to function as a woman in a household. Hepburn's break from Hollywood was a tumultuous time for the new mother. While dealing with rumors of Dottie's inappropriate social life, including affairs with young women, Hepburn also experienced another miscarriage in 1974. By 1979, Dottie's affairs had grown increasingly more public, with his outings detailed in the press. Finally, in 1982, Dottie and Hepburn officially ended their more than 12-year marriage. Hepburn found love again with Dutch actor Robert Walters in the 1980s, and although they never married, Hepburn saw them as husband and wife. They remained together until Hepburn's passing in 1993. Audrey Hepburn's biggest appeal was her class, charm, elegance, and unique screen presence. She did not allow her trauma to define her. What performance made you love Audrey Hepburn? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Until next time, later.